shy introverted people of Reddit. What is the furthest you've ever gone to avoid human interaction? Was 5 minutes late to school so I decided to skip school altogether that day to avoid the awkward class entry. I've done this multiple times. College. Had to attend an out of town conference with my classmates as part of the requirements for a course. My professor had booked a block of rooms at the hotel where the conference was held. And people were going to put 3-4 guys or girls to a room and split the cost. My classmates had a bunch of socializing and bar hopping planned. Which sounds like my idea of a living hell. Also. All of them carpooled together in groups. I honestly would have rather walked barefoot across a mile of Legos than to be held hostage in a car for 4 hours with people I barely know. A few people asked if I wanted to carpool with them and what room I was in and I said oh. Thank you so much. I'm actually staying with a friend in town though. And I'm stoked to see her I'm going to have to take my own car so I can drive to the conference. I'll catch you guys there. So I wouldn't come off as a weirdo. But I actually reserved a room at another hotel way across town. Attended the bare minimum of the conference. And enjoyed as many coffee shops. Art museums. Downtown shopping trips. And nature trails as I could. Completely relatable. When I was in the military I volunteered for a deployment to get out of going to a wedding. MREs and random rockets mortars wedding receptions. Back when I had roommates I didn't know very well. I'd spend all day in my room without meals to avoid awkward pleasantries. Then I'd get really hungry but the prospect of explaining why I'd spent all day in my room kept me inside. Then they'd text me and ask if I was okay. And I'd say yep. Just keeping busy with some projects. And they'd ask if I'd eaten anything since they hadn't seen me. And I'd say yep. Trust me. I'd never go without food. Then I'd wake up at midnight and steal my own food from the fridge. I've done the same thing except I already knew my roommate pretty well he just had some company over that I did not want to talk to so I stayed in my room for 2 days except for at like 3 or 4 in the morning when I would sneak out to get food from 24 hour fast food joints. In high school I didn't have a car so I walked home. I used to just fast walk to try to beat the crowd of people. But I just didn't want to deal with it anymore so I would stay in the computer lab sometimes and ask my dad to pick me up a few hours later. So once the bell rang to go home. I would just stay in class since I had computers last. The teacher would forget I was in there not even notice me and then turn the lights off. Lock the door. Then leave. Honestly I didn't mind at all. I got to play video games by myself and one time about an hour and a half later the janitor came in and I guess I scared him. He turned the lights on and literally screamed when he saw me. Night janitor is probably also an antisocial person. Loves his quiet nights. No kids. Just him. The quiet. And the mop. Rather than associate with my nosy aunt when I lived with her. I told her I was going out for a while. Moved my car up the street and sat in it watching Netflix on my phone for a couple hours. I went to an empty room and stood in the dark for 45 minutes to avoid a team bonding event. Team bonding is the absolute worst for an introvert. I'm 95% sure I've done that at least 5 times this year. In 7th grade I would hide in the science lab during lunch and recess time and feed and play with the school pets. I would ask to use the bathroom around 10 minutes into lunch and then come back in the last 2 minutes. They probably thought I had some real bad bowel issues. They were 2 birds. A bunny. And 2 guinea pigs. I would feed them carrots and talk to them. Nobody knew that I was there for half of the year. When one of my teachers finally walked in on me I thought I was busted. Luckily she was one of the nicer ones and made it my official job to play with and feed the animals. The hero we deserve. When I was 12. A man in a suit I didn't know knocked on the door. I could see him through the front room window so I hid behind the chair. Looked up to see if he had gone. Made eye contact. Stayed where I was. Wasn't the last time it happened. I'm 29. Guy knocked on my door and I looked out the peephole and he was looking directly gazing into it back at me so I ducked and crouched at the base of the door and then he opened the mail slot to look in which was right above me and I just laid on the ground until he went away. That was yourself from the future. 
going through the drive through just to park and eat alone in my car. I went on a three-week camping trip to avoid two family reunions. I fully support your methods and reasoning. I stopped talking for an entire year of school. Fifth grade. To be precise. Sixth grade. Hey what's up guys. Friends, dude what the f? You can talk. Getting off the bus at the wrong stop and walking because I pressed the stop button too soon and didn't want to tell the driver. I wear headphones all the time. Even if they are off not plugged in. I'm so much more productive at work. People at the gym let me be. And people on the street leave me alone on my walk home. My roommate threw a party at my house and I hid from everyone. There's only one front door and everyone would see me if I left and would want to talk to me. I avoided eating that whole night because I didn't want to walk by the party to get food. My car was trapped between other cars. I ended up jumping out of a second story window and walking 3 miles to a 7-eleven. I'm not as shy and introverted as I used to be. But now I have moods where I do not even want to see a single person until the mood has passed. When I was living in dorms in college. I would stand in my closet or bathroom 4 hours just so I wouldn't have to see the people talking in my room. I ended up hearing a lot of conversations I shouldn't have heard because nobody ever knew I was there lol. Going to cross the street. But then stopping and pretending I don't have to if there's a car approaching so I don't inconvenience them. I do this. But it's because I don't trust people to actually pay attention and stop to avoid running me over. So I always try to leave enough space that they don't need to slow down. I once spent a weekend in a hotel because I just wanted to be alone and chill. Reading books and watching TV. The people I lived with at the time couldn't spend more than an hour on their own with some sort of social interaction. The roomie I have now is like minded and we can go days without talking seeing each other and it's great. Best friend I ever had. We still never talk sometimes. I was getting a taxi back home and must have mumbled or garbled my destination because it was quite clear he was going to a completely different place. Like. Literally as soon as he turned right out of the parking lot instead of left. I literally let the guy drive for 15 minutes in the wrong direction. Eventually just blurting out anywhere here will do and giving him a tenner. And then just walking aimlessly until I found a public transport I recognized and jumped on that. A 10 min cab drive turned into a nearly 2 hour journey home. I have phone anxiety. I was going to drive 1.5 hours to my college to talk to them in person over the summer instead of just calling to follow up on something. I'm not really introverted or shy. But I hard phone calls. I never know what to say. And I always end up talking over people when they pick up. I also dread leaving voicemails. They always sound stupid. Lived in a loft downtown on the third floor. The amount of times I use the stairs in effort to not being trapped on an elevator with a stranger is too many to count. One time there was a family moving in. I walked all the way around the building to the opposite side's entrance to get into the building. Then they were using the elevators. So I took the stairs. Then they were on my floor moving shin. I didn't want it to look like I was trying this hard to avoid them. So I said. Whoops. Wrong floor and walked up two extra floors and waited 10 minutes before going back down to see if they were gone. What should have taken me 5 minutes took me close to 30 to get in my apartment. That's when I realized I might have a problem. Okay folks that's a wrap. This clearly won. I never answer the door unless I'm expecting someone. Just today actually. My neighbor was knocking on my door this morning and I didn't answer. When it was time to head to work I realized I didn't have my keys. I think my neighbor found them and was trying to return them. Update, sure enough. I left my keys in the door last night and my neighbor was nice enough to try to return them. But since I never answer my door. He took them to the front office. Let this be a lesson to my fellow introverts. Don't leave your keys in your door. I ignore knocks on my door too for the most part. But that's because my upstairs neighbor will walk in when I open the door. Then proceed to effing stay and talk for a refine hour even if I'm in the middle of dinner. I routinely cross streets or turn down streets that are in the wrong direction of where I'm going to avoid awkward interactions with vehicles as a pedestrian. 
please don't stop and give me that it's okay to go wave when there's still traffic barreling down the opposite side of the street and you're the only vehicle trying to be courteous. I appreciate what you're trying to do but it would be easier for everyone if you just kept driving. Before I got my own apartment. I was sharing one with two other people. I usually spend Saturday nights away from home. But one time I happened to stay home for the night. One of my roommates was gone. And the other didn't realize that I was at home. So he invited his girlfriend over. I was woken up by the sound of loud fun time in the room right next to mine. As I was lying there. Unable to sleep. I realized something horrifying my period has started. I couldn't leave my room without them noticing that I was there and that I could hear them. I didn't want them to feel awkward. I spent the whole night lying in a pool of my own period blood. Pretending I wasn't there. I'll be in my room. Pretending that I don't exist. That happened to me too. Except the period part. I just got up and went to the toilet to pee. To make sure they know. I am home and can hear everything. So they stopped. Guy pulled up his pants and said to her, I thought your roommate wasn't here? And he left. Anyways. Now they just do it loudly even when they know I'm home and they don't f I'm care. I just use my headphones now. To not hear every sound they make. In order to avoid a mandatory Christmas social for work. I legitimately took myself to the ER just to get the registration wristband. For proof that I actually went to the hospital. And then left. Wasn't sick or anything. And I didn't even see a doctor. I just needed a hospital wristband to prove that I had a reason not to go to the work mixer, so I wouldn't get fired. I hated my co-workers. I failed an important test once because I was too scared to ask the teacher for a pencil. I peed on myself in 4th grade because I was too scared to ask. I once forgot my calculator. The test was to start in 5 minutes. I went out started running to the bookstore which was 15 minutes away bought an $80 calculator. Was late 30 minutes. I could have avoided all of that just by asking for a calculator. Hid under a bed while a real estate agent showed a couple around my flat. Couldn't be bothered to go out but can't stand small talk. So decided to lay low. I had a cup of tea. Cushions. A Nokia with snake on it. I was quite happy under there. They were 25 minutes late. I guess I was under the bed for just over an hour. I feared a sneeze. I was in my early 20s. Not that it has any bearing on this. I had a reel to show me a house once and while I was looking around I opened the attic access and bam. There was a whole family quietly sitting in the attic. I assumed the owners. I looked at them. They looked at me. Not a word was said. I closed up the attic and then decided it was time to GTFO. I am laughing silently in my office imagining what would have happened if anyone had casually looked under the bed. I work at a hotel and one of the worst things about it are the really chatty guests. They'll just stand at my desk and jibber jabber. Completely failing to take the hint. Even saying excuse me. I have a lot of work to do will typically only get them to say oh don't let me interrupt but they'll never walk away. I've learned to call the hotel phone from my cell phone. I answer the phony call and then tell the guest excuse me. This is important. Then I slip into the back and watch them on the video monitors until they f off. The postman was knocking on my door. So rather than answer it. I decided to army crawl past the door. So he wouldn't see me through the frosted glass. Then he pushed open the letterbox. And saw me splayed across the floor. Someone was knocking on my door recently. I quickly went to the door to look through the peephole. The actual peephole is covered with black electrical tape and a tiny pin sized dot so people can't see when I look through it from the outside. I didn't recognize them so I didn't answer. What I forgot to take into account was that my shadow from the desk lamp behind me was very clearly being displayed against the curtain and window next to the door. They called out. Ugh. This reminds me of something I did as a kid. In my childhood home there were two large windows on either side of the front door so any visitor could see you and you could see them. After the initial entry there was a long hallway with a kitchen at the end. One day someone rang the doorbell when I was home alone. My parents told me not to answer the door when I was home alone but I wanted to see who it was. 
so I stood in the kitchen and peered around the kitchen corner to look out the front door. I locked eyes with two Jehovah's Witnesses and then I just slowly pulled my head back around the kitchen corner like nothing even happened. I played way too many James Bond video games as a kid and this corner peering method worked zero stroke ten times.